And the classes ended like every other day. There are many kinds of students. Ones that go to clubs, ones that hurry home, and ones that stay in the classroom for no reason. It looks like I won't be in any of those categories. Sorry, Emiya, about the rest of the repairs. Do you have time today? Well, I do have plans, but... It's not like I'm just playing around. After all, the main reason I quit the archery club is because I wanted to prioritize. It's already been five years since father died, and I decided to start working to pay my living expenses. If you work a lot, there are some jobs you just can't refuse. Today's an example. They're restocking inventory at work, and they ask me to come if I can, if I can as any help is appreciated. What? And they asked me to come if I can. Oh, okay. But it's certainly not something I have to go to. They're probably just having people come in because they want to party after work. Goddamn partiers. There are two options. I, I'll go and help out the student council. I'll go to work. Two options. So, what happens if I help out the student council? I don't remember what exactly happens. <laughs> I don't know what any of these things lead to right now, guys. I can land on any anything right now. So, okay, so let's let's weigh our options here. Let's try and figure out. So, I'll go and help out the student council. That has who would that have there? Um Oh god, I don't even know. Reen would maybe be there. I'll go to work. So, yeah, okay, so work. If he chose to go to work, I don't know who would be there at all. But, oh, God. Uh, you know what? We need some money to pay for living expenses. I know we have to go repair stuff. I get that. But we got to go to work. We can't help everybody out all the time. We got to think for ourselves here, guys. I know Shiro Emiya doesn't think for himself, but today he is. I feel sorry for Issei, but I should prioritize work. I didn't promise to be there, but I said I'd do my best to be there, so I should do so. No, sorry Issei, I've got plans, so can we finish it some other time? Plans? Oh, you must mean your work. Sorry to trouble you, this isn't an urgent matter. Don't worry about me, and go to work. Sorry, I'll continue first thing in the morning so we can call it an evening. So we can call it even. Hmm, I told you it's not that important. The urgent staff was finished this morning. You can finish the rest when you're free, Emiya. I see. Then can I finish it when I don't have work? Sure. Oh, oops. Sure, I'll rely on you again, Emiya. Issei says farewell and leaves the classroom. Well... I should hurry off, too. Even though there's no set time to be there, I should head for the neighboring town if I want to. If I'm going to go to work. Yeah, we're gonna go to work. Going to work. Going to our jobs. We're gonna get some money. Jeez, I thought I was only helping out, but they gave me 30,000 yen. Call it receiving a windfall, I guess. Nice. What are you going to spend on 30,000 yen? Let's see here. Uh, <coughs> I don't know. I don't know what that translates to. Like $300? Maybe even more? Like 3000 Copenhagen, the place where I work today, is like a liquor store and a bar. And a lot of people are needed to restock the inventory. It's a big job that takes at least five people, and it doesn't hurt to have more help. But the boss just said to, to everyone in his usual tone, if you can come and help, please do so. Completely relaxed about it. But as it turned out, I was the only one who came along with the boss and his daughter, Neko-san. Who's Neko-san? You, Baka! <laughs> Baka! There's no way people will come if you ask like that! Neko-san was scolding the boss, but I showed up to be a victim, defying their expectations. They welcomed me with a cheer, and then we decided to clean up the storage area as best as we could. Nice. And so, before we realized, two hours had passed and we'd finished restocking the inventory. A surprise, Shiro. 
Are you some kind of brownie or something? What does that mean? <laughs> After work, the boss, the boss eats a brown cake while being impressed. Not at all. I'm just used to heavy jobs and I've worked here long enough to know where things are. I haven't been working here since I was small for nothing, you know? Oh yeah, has it been five years already? About that long, you guys were the only ones that would hire me right after my father died. Whoa, no wonder I'm feeling old. He eats his rum cake. Neko-san is- why is- Neko-san? Neko-san, why would you- I don't even know- is she like a cat lady? Neko-san is drinking hot sake next to him. The family is well balanced, as the boss likes sweet things while his daughter like spicy things. So, but you really helped us out. I can't just give you a cake for all the work, so here's a token of my appreciation. He hands me three 10,000 yen bills. So it is like $100. A reward unmatched for three hours of work I did, but much more that I would get even for a week's work. Oh, thank you. I hesitate but decide to accept what I'm given. And as I'm leaving Copenhagen, mm, hold on, Emiya, who do you hear about? Who who do you hear about today from? Neko-san stops me while curled up in front of the heater. Uh, I think it was Furumi-san. Man, that idiot! Don't push your work onto a student. Well, so you came here today even though you didn't have to. Uh, well, it was like, come and help if I wasn't busy, kind of thing. Froomey's an idiot. So are you. Oh well, you never turned down anyone asking for help, do ya? You? you took care of the store when Dad and I got sick, too. Hmm. I don't think that's true. I don't take impossible jobs, I only accept things I can do. Hmm, but you were, you were sick, too, back then. I don't really care, but what I'm saying is, you're a good person and a bit stupid. So I'm a bit worried. Tell Fujimura to come and see me from time to time. Neko-san circles her finger while drinking some hot sake. She seems to think I'm a firefly or something. Okay, so just tell Fujine then? Right. See ya. Don't push yourself too hard, boy. Wow. Wow, I'm already past the bridge. I made it from the neighboring town of Shinto back into Miyama City while I was daydreaming. Nice. I walk through the moonlit town. Walking up the road, I notice that there aren't any people around. The time is around 7.30. There should be people around at this time, but there's no sign of anyone. Oh yeah. There was some crime here in Miyama City a few days ago. A burglar murdered someone, I think. That must be why there's no one around and why the school curfew became 6 o'clock. Gas leaks and murder, huh? It's been getting dangerous lately. No wonder there are fewer people walking around at night. It's getting too dangerous to let Sakura go home on her own. Sakura's house is in the residential area on the other side of town. Starting tonight, I should walk her home. Huh? For a moment, I can't believe my eyes. There is someone on the road which I thought was empty. The person is standing above me as if looking down at me. It's, uh... What's her name? Ilias Vale. Should I say that? <laughs> I'm not sure. Without realizing it, I hold my breath. The silver-haired girl smiles and descends the hill without a sound as she passes. Oh my god, you know what I just thought of? Put Ilias Veal in, in Amelia's clothing from ReZero. There you go. Fan fiction, everybody. Everybody's happy. As she passes. Uh, well, that's an easy thumbnail right there. At least we got that. You'll die if you don't summon it soon, Oni-chan. What? Why is she calling me Oni-chan? She says something strange. I go up the hill and reach my house. As the lights are on, Sakura and Fujine must be home already. That was strange. That was really weird. I don't know what that was. I smelled dinner the moment I entered the living room. 
At the table are Sakura and Fujine in the middle of dinner. It seems the main dish tonight is chicken and cream and Fujine, who loves white sauce, is in a good mood. Welcome home, senpai. We're sorry for starting without you. Damn it, Sakura. <laughs> sorry, I I'm late. I wish I could have come home earlier. No, you made it. Could you wait a bit? I'll get your dinner ready right away. Yeah, alright. I'll go wash my hands, so make sure Fujine doesn't eat my food. Yes, I will. I return to my room. It's a fairly empty room compared to the shed, but since I don't have any hobbies, I think it's quite decorated. Most of them are random things Fujine has left there. I wash my hands, change, and return to the living room to find my dinner ready. Itadakimasu! I hope it is to your liking. Sakura is terribly modest. Her cooking skills have vastly improved in the last year. She has me completely beaten at western style foods and I can barely beat her at Japanese food. Neither of us have touched Chinese. <laughs> I'm pleased my pupil is getting better, but it's kind of depressing when the teacher is defeated by the student. Mmm. It's good as I expected. Chicken becomes harder the longer you cook it, so it's juicier and tastier if you roast it before cooking it, even though it's tedious. That's done perfectly here. That's done perfectly here? It's a master skill forever beyond the clumsy Fujine. How was it, senpai? Um, I think I did quite well today. It's perfect. The sauce is great, too. What? Uh... I guess you have me completely beat when it comes to western food. Yeah, meaty food is much better since Sakura-chan started cooking. Why do people- okay, question. Why do people refer to themselves in Japanese media? I've, I've noticed that. They're always like... They're like, they're like talking and then they're, they're like, instead of saying, Oh, I'm getting much better at doing this, they're like, oh. Sakura-chan is getting much better at cooking the food. Why don't they just say I? Is it some cultural thing? Is it just like normal for them to say their names? Do they even say their names or is this like a translation thing? I'm not even sure. Someone down in the comments below will probably know. Someone probably knows how to speak Japanese. I don't... I don't know. With that. Fujine, who had been preoccupied with her food, lifts up her head. Oh, Shiro, a student mustn't come home this late. Ugh. Seems she's in a bad mood now. She's seen my face, even though she was happy because of my di because of dinner. Jeez, I bet you were helping someone again. That's good, but at least come home early at times like this. I even told you it was dangerous in homeroom. I said it for your sake, for your own sake, you know. Uh, can't you tell me that at home instead of in homeroom? You wouldn't listen if I told you here. It's more effective if I tell you at school. Sensei, I think that's abusing your authority. You shouldn't mix work and private life. <laughs> I, just, I love that art of, of, of Fujine. That's so funny. No, it's not enough for Shiro unless I go that far. He's always on the losing side because he's the one helping everyone else. He should at least come straight home and relax sometimes. That idiot. Hey, what do you mean by idiot? I'm not on the losing side if I help someone and they've helped, they've been helped by it. Man, I wonder if you got that from Kuritsugu-san. I worry because you're like that. I don't exactly know how she's worried as she's energetically munching down her dinner. Um, Fujimura-sensei? From what you s- oh, Okay, so you gotta actually talk like Sakura. Um, Fujimura-sensei? From what you said? Has Senpai been like this since he was small? She's gotta speak very low, be very modest, timid almost. Yep, he's always been like that. He's the type that goes to help people in trouble, but he's not meddlesome, he's just a bit precocious. Fujine laughs dangerously. Dangerously, that's a dangerous laugh. Fujine, I'll get mad if you say too much. You too, Sakura, don't ask such boring questions. I glare at them. Glare! Fujine clicks her tongue and backs down, but Fujimura-sensei, please continue. 
Sakura is taking the lesson seriously. Then I shall. See, Shiro is a person who can't ignore someone in trouble. It's like helping the weak and defeating the strong. In the essay he wrote as a child, he said, My dream is to become a superhero. She's surprised by this. She's talking about days for such a long time ago. And it's all true! So I don't interrupt. Anyways, becoming a superhero is a goal I must not stray from, even now. <laughs> what? What's up with her face? What's up with Sakura's face? Wow, Senpai. Wow, Senpai was a real kid. Yep, he was some kid. He would go and help girls being picked on by older kids, and he'd do the chores around the house because Kuritsugu-san would. Because Kuritsugu-san wouldn't! Man, he was so cute and innocent back then. So why did he grow up so crooked? Crooked? Crooked! Probably because of you. Kids think a lot when they see bad adults. Learn how to make your own dinner before you say anything like that. Wow! Wow! Burn! <laughs> oh, this is great. I thought she might drop her head and repent, but... Oh, Odi-chan is sad. Sakura-chan, can I have another bowl? Fujine asked for her third bowl. That was funny. That was cute. It's cute and funny. Funny and cute. Relaxing after dinner. It's almost nine o'clock. Well, what shall I do? There's some time before my evening training. I should... I'll take Sakura home. I'll play with Fujine. I'll rest. Well... Okay, so if I take Sakura home, that means I'll be doing the soccer route probably. I don't want to do that. I'll play with Fujine. I'll, uh, eh, I don't know about that. I'll rest. Okay, so let's think logically here. Let's let's weigh the options. <laughs>